Since I started making YouTube videos more regularly, I have been much more aware of a very common debate in the music YouTube sphere. I often come across this question of, do I need to learn to read music? Do I need to know music theory? How much music theory do I need to know? Insert influential musician here doesn't read music, why should I? I think all of these are the wrong questions to be asking. My name is David Rishpan, welcome to my YouTube channel. We're gonna talk about why theory and ear training are the wrong terms and the wrong questions. Let's get into it. Over the winter, I was studying with Jota Pé, the great Brazilian saxophonist, and he used a term that I had never really come across. In English music education, we use the term ear training. In Portuguese and in French, the translation of the phrase that they use is musical perception. This way of framing what we're trying to do when we work on our ears, when we work on analyzing music and being able to identify things by listening, the phrase musical perception was so much more accurate and kind of led me to start asking the more accurate and important questions. So instead of asking yourself, do I need to learn to read music? Should I learn music theory? Here's the questions I want you to ask yourself. Do I need to communicate my music to other people? And what do I need to perceive? in my music. We are going to talk about musical communication and musical perception in this video. So the first part, musical communication. Do you need to communicate your music or the music of others to other people? If that answer is no, you can skip to the next part of this video. If you are an electronic producer, that is not going to work with other artists, you are a self-contained musical entity, you can skip to the next part of this video. If you are not interested in performing or playing with other musicians and you just want to play music in your living room for your own pleasure, and I say this, I want to specify this, that's not meant in a negative way. That is a completely valid and beautiful goal, but you need to be clear about that with yourself. And if playing solo in your living room is what you want to do, you can also skip to the next part of this video. Everyone else, if you are communicating your music to other people, or other people are communicating music to you, stick around. This Do you need to learn to read music? The answer to that question is how do people in your circle communicate music to each other. The question I see so much on the internet is do I need to learn to read music when the question should really be what do I want to do with music? What do I want to be as a musician? And then that will answer the question of whether or not you need to learn to read written Western notation. If you want to work in film scores, if you want to play musical theater, classical music, things that are communicated most efficiently by the written Western notation, then yes, you absolutely need to learn to read music. If you want to be a session musician in popular music, reading Western notation is not necessarily the only thing that's going to help you. If you are working in Nashville, for instance, or you want to move to Nashville and become part of that scene, then you should become fluent in the Nashville number system. You may not need to read really intricate Western notation, but you definitely need to have a good knowledge of applied theory to understand how chords go together, how chord progressions work, common chord progressions in the styles of music you want to be playing. So in a band setting, if you are working with other musicians, you want to be able to communicate what's going on, either in your tune or the tune your band is learning or in somebody else's tune, in the most efficient way possible. And if you have to kind of count frets on the guitar because you don't know what the note names are, 
or if you have to kind of squint at your fellow guitar player's hands to figure out what the chord shape is, you know, maybe there's a quicker way to explain what's happening. And if you can all share a similar language uh, about how to explain the music to each other, that will make your rehearsals much more efficient, much quicker, and much more productive. If you're a singer and you're bringing your repertoire to a band, you should understand the concept of key centers, of transposition, and what key you sing your songs in. So many of these scenarios don't necessarily require that you read sheet music. They do require that you understand the workings of music, of the styles of music that you're playing. And this is where I feel like the question of did so-and-so read music is the wrong question. Did Jimi Hendrix read music? By his own admission, maybe not. Did he understand what was going on in his music and in the music that came before him? Absolutely. Does Paul McCartney read notation? Maybe not. Does he have a fundamental, intrinsic understanding of how harmony and melody in pop music works? Absolutely. Can he communicate what's going on in his music to other people around him and in an efficient manner? Absolutely. That is the point. That is what we need to do as musicians. Musical perception. Hello soloists, hello electronic producers. This is where you can come back to the video and you should come back to the video. Theory is a way to communicate music to other people. If you are a soloist, if you are an electronic producer and you're working alone and you don't need to communicate anything to anybody but yourself, what you need to do is perceive and hear certain things. For example, can you hear can you perceive if your 808 is out of tune with the rest of your track? Can you perceive if your vocal sample is out of tune with the rest of the music? That's what you need to work on. You don't necessarily need Western tonal musical theory to understand this or to improve at it. You just need to work on your musical perception. Musical perception or ear training is the ability to hear, recognize, and repeat, recreate elements of music. What are the characteristic sounds or ways of playing chords in R&B compared to country, compared to reggae, compared to pop music? All of those things, the theory is the label. And there are particular labels that have been developed that are kind of the common vocabulary that we use to describe these things. If you don't have to interface with other people, then you can label these things however you want. The most important thing is that you perceive them, that you realize them, and that you can recreate them as necessary. If you want to be playing songs for your own enjoyment in your living room, the most important musical perception that you need is to understand that there are common chord progressions, common ways of structuring music that come back in a lot of the repertoire that you're probably going to learn. And the more repertoire, the more songs that you learn, the more quickly you will recognize that I have played this before. One thing I've seen with my students who are getting into jazz from classical music and don't come to it with a lot of theory or harmonic knowledge is this kind of fear and panic of how to realize chord symbols, how to understand chord symbols. More importantly, I see a lot of students treating every single chord in a song as its own entity and Every time that chord comes back in a song, it feels like we're starting from zero in how to realize that chord. But if you can start to get a grasp, either theoretically or perceptually, perceptually, perceptively, 
If you can hear it, if you can recognize the patterns that make up the music that you play and the music that you love, then when you see a progression that you've already learned, it's just maybe transposed. It's maybe in a different key. Maybe it's a little bit backwards. Maybe it's been modified. Maybe it doesn't go where it went in song A, but it goes where it went in song D. The more quickly you can recognize patterns, the more quickly you can hear patterns, the more quickly you hear how the music you love is put together, then that will open up all kinds of doors for you as a growing, developing musician. So for the people who just want to play music on their own in their living room, understanding how the music you're working on is put together will allow you to learn more repertoire more quickly. It will allow you to add more songs more quickly to the list of stuff you want to play for your own enjoyment. For the electronic producers, hip hop producers, if you can start to hear the tuning of your bass lines, the tuning of your vocals, the tuning of all the elements of your track, that will save you so much time in your mix because you won't be trying to fit things together that don't fit together. If your 808 is not sitting right, maybe the first thing you should try doing is retuning it. Maybe that suddenly opens up your mix now because now all of your frequencies are in harmony with each other and they all work together with each other. Look at the type of music you want to be playing. Look at the type of music you love. Develop a greater understanding, whether it's by ear or by analysis, of how that music is put together and what the common sounds are of that music. And by sounds, I don't mean just the notes. Popular music is not only determined by the notes, it's determined by the rhythms and by the tones as well. On a harmonic level, on a theoretical level, Western music shares 12 notes of the tempered chromatic scale, that's it. It's how those notes get combined rhythmically and with what sounds that they use and the forms that they use, the structures that they use. That's where things get different and that's where genres are defined. The motivating question should always be, what do I want to do with music? What are my goals in music? And from there, the questions of, do I need to learn music theory? Do I need to learn to read music? fall into place. Because as you learn what you actually need to achieve what you want to do, then those answers become incredibly apparent. I know there are exceptions to this. I know there are film composers who hire copyists and don't read music. Again, I would argue that the reading music is a detail, but their musical perception is absolutely on point and they have their own ways of communicating to whoever they need to communicate to. I would also argue that any film composer at a high level has ultimately learned enough about how to read and write music in the course of doing what they do. I don't think that anyone at the top of their game has gotten there by willfully being ignorant about the mechanics of their job. So I hope that helps you wade through this litany of YouTube videos that exist on this debate. I hope that helps you find your own path in how to learn the music you love more efficiently and quickly. If you enjoy the content on this channel, you know what to do. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Click the notification bell so you are up to date whenever I post new material. Follow me on all the other social media platforms at Rishpan Music. If you are feeling particularly generous and you want more of this kind of information, go over to my Patreon page and sign up for some exclusive content. Thank you for watching. I wish you the best in your practice routine and in your own creativity. Stay safe, stay healthy. I'll see you in the next one.